thank you anshana <coughs> good afternoon ladies and gentlemen it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all for the fourth day faculty day faculty development program afternoon session may request dr lees the senior professor from srm ministry department of physical education to give the welcome address good afternoon to all on behalf of uh, director of sports i dr lewis take a privilege to welcome you all for day four faculty development program it's my immense pleasure to welcome dr mohan krishnan director of sports srm isd next i would like to introduce the correct person dr m jawaharlal dean college of agriculture and sciences srm isd who is very much interested in sports field especially in the game of hockey once again i welcome you sir thank you next i am happy to introduce a correct person to this faculty development program he is none other than my colleague as well as my friend professor dr ilai raja department of physical education and sports pandicherry university once again i welcome you sir thank you finally i would like to welcome dr jesus rajkumar our honorable secretary of this program and my colleagues dr albert dr sandil dr dr asat ali khan dr suresh and my fellow uh, phd scholars once again i welcome you all for the day four faculty development program thank you thank you dr lees for giving a warm welcome to all the participants as well as the guests today uh, may i invite dr jawar lal dean college of agriculture and sciences to give the inaugural address sir please uh, thank you sir uh, thank you for your uh, nice introduction uh, good afternoon to one and all there uh, my friend and respecter uh, director of sports srmist dr mohan krishnan uh professor alus uh, who has given a wonderful welcome and i thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity uh today morning i had a surprise call from dr mohan krishnan she asked me to uh, participate and uh, inaugurate the program so i am very happy uh, to give the inaugural address so because sports is my passion sports is the my first entertainment i spend more time to watch different game, games i am lover of all athletics even um, games starting from kabaddi to cricket to basketball so i used to when i was the professor uh, in the tamil nadu agriculture university for more than uh, 35 years i used to involve myself in all sports activities and uh, i am very happy to inaugurate uh, the a uh, faculty development program is one of the important uh, mandates in the curriculum particularly the recent 2 uh, 3 decades particularly the last one decade the development of sports in the country is enormous we are actually competent in all sports because of uh, the government and the uh, interest of the youth and uh, the institutes particularly the institutes play a major role to identify the uh, right uh, person in the right age to give a uh, right a uh, training to them uh, to develop his sports interest and also involvement and uh, the valluvan kuralukku inanga moyerchi thiruvunayakkum moyerchinmai inmai pogutti vidu enbargal adu pola the faculty development program it is shortly called as fdp is a very important uh, program so you all know that change is the only thing inevitable and so faculty need to change upgrade update of skill to hop up to the changing needs from time to time therefore the faculty development is a heart to an institution or any other organization so the faculty is not vibrant we can't expect any development in the any particular field particularly the faculty development program for physical education is very important you know the sports also so moving towards the 
uh, what you call uh, like the, how the other technologies are being developed. It is on par with the IT development. It is on par with the science development. So each and everywhere in the sports, the science now, I am, you know, entering into that to develop the, uh, you know, the uh, skill development program. It's one of the very important program in all fields, particularly the skill development program like the faculty development. Also, it provides upskilling and uh, not only upskilling, a uh, reskilling of an individual. And thereby, it gives effectiveness and as well as the efficiency of a faculty. That is, uh, no, whatever hours we work, it is not a matter. How efficiently the hours are being utilized. If you want to train a student in the particular hours, because it's a sports is a co-curriculum in most of the faculties. And the early specific time is available for the students to involve in sports. If evening hours, two hours means, the efficiency is most important. The time management is very important. In a particular time, how you are going to train a person on the particular uh, specific field so that if your faculty is not properly trained, a property a faculty is not a specialist, he should not be a, a generalist, he should be a specialist to, to train the youth that is most important. So here, uh, this will definitely be uh, visible in teaching not only sports actually involved teaching or coaching. In sports also a lot of research and development programs are going, starting from whatever it may be given, how uh, sports actually is a more relevant to agriculture field nowadays. The players need to be given a specific nutritious food, a multivitamin or protein, whatever it may be. If it goes through the plant product, it is very well, or animal, whatever it may be. So everything is integrated. Everything needs a cross learning so that faculty development is very important. It is a technology advances. So fast or in order to cope up with the technology and advancement, particularly, especially in the field of even how the electronics or ICT or IT is being developed, all everywhere we have to involve the recent technology into the sports also. And it is called the advancement were not a part of the syllabus in the degree courses. So hence, a faculty need mastery in teaching the advanced tools, as well as how the tools have to be properly utilized. Everything has to be properly taught to the faculty. So that's why the uh, faculty developer program is very, uh, you know, what you call vital in any, per, any program. So training the trainers, otherwise called, is very, very important. So anybody should update their particular skill. Otherwise, they will be outdated. So that updating is only through the faculty development we can give. You know, one person changed the one sports. I want to give an example. Uh, Gobi Chan, uh, he is a trainer in the shuttle badminton. So the, the center of now, the shuttlecock is in Hyderabad only because one third person has changed the scenario. So likewise, uh, the sports actually not only uh, gives education, it gives a discipline, it gives decorum, it gives a time management, which is the most important criteria for anybody, so that the faculty development, which enables experience, uh, like a professor like Elay Raja, experience older faculty to compete with younger faculty. That is the most important of the FDP. That's why we are calling a professor like Ilay Raja uh, to be the resource person in this particular field. So the FDP uh, help in assessing the uh, skill gap of an individual faculty. There is a lot of missing link. We have to identify the missing links or we have to identify the gap, what a person is having, what is the faculty is missing. He may be talented, mm -hmm. but he himself cannot identify his talent. A trainer has to identify what talent even a faculty has. He, he should not be a generalist. He should be a specialist. Then only he can train a particular person in the particular field. So it provides an opportunity for the faculty for self-assessment and learning. It is most important criteria. Anybody should understand their strength and also weakness. And every uh, to the faculty development program, 
the weakness of the individual should be converted into the strength. It is a very simple calculation. So here, the faculty development will also provide direction to the faculty to improve on their uh, teaching or coaching skill. And addition to that coaching, a small kind of research they have to make. And these two combine, the teaching and research, ultimately the administration will come. And here, the, the present past, uh, uh, the management of youth is very difficult. Being a teacher, I'm a teacher for the more than 36 years. Uh, so whatever, even in science, identify the weaker section and, uh, and inculcate the, uh, no, the uh, new things into him is very difficult. So molding or taming, uh, uh, taming, so the world is called training. Taming is very important to train and youth. I had one of my immediate senior friend 35 years back. Uh, he was actually 6.5 feet height. When he was entering into college, he even doesn't touch the, didn't touch the basketball. One master he identified his physique, his height will help and we can mold him a basketball player. And I actually, when compared to him, I used to play basketball, but I cannot compare uh, with him. And I used to play with him. So I actually, I am nearly six feet height, 5.9, but his height is 6.5. And the master trained him and he started playing wonderful basketball. And later he has become a national captain of basketball team of India. Imagine how a faculty can develop an individual, how a faculty can mold an individual, that is most important. So identifying the right youth in the right time and the inculcate the skill is very important. It is possible by only the faculty development program. So I want to conclude with the opportunities for the faculty to upskill besides a, a conventional in-house and learning, which includes nowadays massive open uh, open online programs are there. The corona period, a lot of things happened, positive things also happened. We started learning. You know, this program through online, I'm sitting in Coimbatore, I'm interacting with you because before corona, we didn't identify this kind of technology. When condition arises, definitely the things will be identified. And a lot of positive things also we learn from corona, how a person should keep his physique fit how a nutritious food has to be taken. Everything includes at the, in the sports program to develop a sports person. And there is a possibility or opportunity in the virtual webinars. And there is a possibility to give exposure visit. That is most important. We have to take the faculty uh, or otherwise the sports person he has to be given a lot of exposures. By seeing is the believing. L directly they have to, and after that they will develop their own skill. And another important mm -hmm. thing, thing is uh, co-learning with other institutions. So you are in a, from Pondicherry University. You may have a lot of uh, new things. Even, even in SRM, a lot of things will be available. The exchange of the things is very important. Otherwise, it is called cross-learning with other allied faculties. The cross-learning is very, very important to update our skill, our learn, our uh, I mean, the knowledge definitely should be um, made into the skill only because of the faculty development program, the assignment on deputation with other institutions, uh, possible international institutions through online or national institutions very well, the linkages has to be made. So I'm very happy. I don't want to take much of your time. So thank you very much. Uh, I thank personally Dr. Mohan Krishnan and suddenly today morning only told. So I, I, since I am a lover of sports, I'm very happy. Today itself, I'm feeling I, I enthusiasm. Some kind of energy is going inside me. I feel good. Though I'm running 61, I feel 16. I'm not 6-1, I'm 1-6 one, one now. So everything because of the sports, the energy and the enthusiasm. So I wish you this program of um, a faculty development program on um, uh, the subject is um, what you call... Um, a long, a long term athlete development. It's very, very important. And as a resource person, definitely um, feel good that uh, definitely you will along, apart from your teaching, you inculcate the 
good qualities of a person, a faculty, a learner should be have this will develop definitely a discipline, a decorum, everything into him. And I wish this program should be a successful one. Once again, I thank Professor Magnakishan and other colleagues for giving me an excellent opportunity to, opportunity to share my experience with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your effective and efficient <laughs> inaugural address, sir. Thank you so thank much. You. Sir. Thank you. Thank sir. you, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I will uh, return for, for a few minutes after that, I leave, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, sir. thank you, sir. Over to India Raja. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce Professor Dr. Ile Raja, the energy of physical education and sports sciences in India. The young dynamic leader who approaches physical education in a different angle and in uh, different thoughts. He did his BPEs from Annamala University in the year 1998, MPS in the year 2000, MPhil in the year 2003, PhD in the year 2009, and it is MSc Yoga in the year 2019. He has published plenty of papers in international journals, that is 12, and in national journals in 14. So far, he has guided seven candidates, and then they have been awarded. And now, under his guidance, is there are six scholars. He, he achieved plenty of things, and he has even received awards for the year 2016 and 18 from UGC. And his thesis was awarded the best thesis in the year 2008. Life member of Indian Federation of Computer Sciences in Sports. And, and his affiliation to different academics and bodies. School of Physical Education and Sports Sciences from Tani University, Department of Physical Education and Sports from Manamal University, Department of Physical Education and Sports from Mananmanim Sundarana University, Indian Federation of Computer Science in Sports, is a life member there, and Director of Sports, Pondicherry University. Over to Dr. Ilay Raja for your presentation. A most respected Dean, Dr. Professor Jawaharlal sir. Thank you for your uh, wonderful uh, inaugural address. I would like to uh, request the uh, faculties of Department of Physical Education of SRM University to invite Sarah as a resource person. Sarah is really resourceful in the field of physical education and sports as a sports lover. So at least in future, you may consider my request. Uh, he has a lot of knowledge in the field of sports and physical education. So uh, it's my humble request to the department. And happy afternoon to all of you. At the outset, I would like to thank Director Sports, uh, Mohan Krishnan sir, and uh, Dr. Jesus Rajkumar sir, and uh, Dr. Lewis sir, and all the learned faculty members of the Department of uh, Physical Education and Sports, SRM Institute of Sports Science and Technology. Uh, it is my great pleasure and I have thank the institution uh, authorities for this wonderful opportunity to deliver my uh, speech in this plat online platform. But when I got a call from the director for this FDP program, it gives me an immense pleasure because it is an opportunity for me to share my ideas. I'm not going to teach you anything, actually. I want to share my knowledge with you all. It is a kind of a reciprocal thing. It should be an interactive one. Uh, so today's my presentation topic is actually LTAD, Long-Term Athlete Development Program. Uh, too often, I'll tell you why I choose this topic, first of all. Too often or very often we can say, coaches deliver adult version of sport. What it means actually. Uh, even when you handle children or youth or both male and female youth or children, they are unaware of the need of different types of training at different stages. Uh, I wanted to emphasize this point very clearly. Before sharing my PowerPoint, I'll tell you why I choose this topic. See, for example, uh, I wanted to ask you all, those who are participating as a faculty members or uh, scholars, whoever it is, you just think about, uh, I just start with, I would like to ask you about your experience as a young athlete during your school days 
or your college days whether you enjoyed your sport and physical activity was your youth sports experience is positive fun full enjoyable just think about your young age during my for example during my school days or during my young age i used to play all sports and games like kabaddi kho kho i used to swim in the river pond i used to go for cycling i used to play cricket i used to play ball badminton athletics volleyball so i a lot of opportunity to take part in all sports and games through which lot of athletics movements skills were learned by me and also i enjoyed the sport and physical activity as a fun and pleasure but what is happening now especially lot of sports federations and organizations uh, coaches they are imposing or they are delivering adult version of training or adult version of uh, skill program to the young athletes especially from the young age itself they are forcing uh, young uh, talented sports people boy or girl whoever it is to specialize one particular sport for example uh, i i am specialized in tennis in sense i force people to start specializing tennis from the young age onwards so the problem is we have to understand that uh, when you are uh, joining in a school just think about it actually what is happening in school first we are starting with alphabets and then we are starting with numbers right and then we are going for a, a teaching a new words and then we are going for a sentences and then paragraphs and after you got, if you got a thorough knowledge in all these things we are going to specialize the subject like chemistry physics mathematics in which also we are going into super specialization right but when it comes to sports we are very clear about this in education aspects i i hope you understand my concept so when you join in a school we are going in a systematic way according to the age we are starting and we are progressing in a in case for example um, we wanted to learn cycling what we are doing first with the tricycle right that means three wheels after that we are going to a bicycle with a training wheel additional training wheel for safety and then we are switching over to the real bicycle after that it goes on competition likewise so everything we are doing systematically in a scientific way according to the sta different stages of human growth and development we have to understand no two individuals are similar in nature so everybody is different even though they are uh, uh, um, what is this chronologically they have the same age group same year of uh, birth but their growth and development is different especially boys and girls are different totally even in boys between boys or between girls their growth and development is totally different so we are having a package of training skills and techniques especially it is a adult version of coaching we never worried about uh, we always treat our young athletes as young adults it is a totally wrong concept so for that reason only i choose this topic long term athlete development why because uh, this approach this uh, a long term athlete approach is a stage by stage approach it gives every child youth and adult the greatest opportunity to engage in lifelong health enhancing physical activity and if they have the talent and drive to reach the highest sports performance potential the problem in present scenario everybody it is important to understand that everybody wants to introduce long term athletic development but the problem is because of the present uh, sporting situation everybody want to specialize or everybody want to achieve with some winning some of mindset that means i wanted to win medal and i wanted to join in medicine based on that certificate so winning some of so it's not based on uh, 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 the the sports for active lifestyle importance is not physical active lifestyle it is only for winning some of mindset so with that understanding only i wanted to emphasize this long term athlete development model so now i am going to share my presentation
um, sir, uh, can you? I think it is disabled. I cannot share my screen. Rajkumar, sir. Sanjay, I cannot uh, get you. Sanjay, share. I cannot Sanjay. share my screen because it is dis uh, now it is okay. Now it's okay. Okay, fine. You can do it, sir. You can do it. You can do it. Okay. Yes, sir. Now it is okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. இளையராஜா சார் பண்ண முடியுதா யா 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 சரி சரி சார் ஜஸ்ட் அப்படி இஸ் இட் விசிபிள் சார் நவ் யா Uh, yeah so long term athlete development framework for developing the future athletes why is the long term athlete development what is the need of long term uh, athlete development program the original driving force for this ltad came from ballet and weiss they are two scientists from canada this ltad model was to improve the quality of sports programs the idea was to enable all participants to reach their full potential it is a planned systematic and progressive development of individual athletes it's also referred as a long term participant development or long term player development program ltad is the answer to one fundamental question what needs to be done at each stage of human development to give every child the best chance of engaging in lifelong health enhancing physical activity and for those with drive and talent the best chance of athletic success as i told you earlier each and every stage growth and development is changing no say no two individuals are same for example when you are 3 year old you are different when you are 5 year old you are different 7 years 10 years when you attain adolescence when you attain pre pre adolescence or sorry pre puberty and then adulthood every time there are a lot of changes happening in your body so growth and development when happens automatically their need their uh, interest also changing accordingly so if you have a set pattern of training drills and programs if you follow the same for entire population surely it is a punishment for them it is not funful or joyful that is what the ltad concept comes so uh, the effective long term athlete development focuses on what is best for the participant throughout their life rather than short term gains or early success so you have to understand people are uh, giving example of sachin tendulkar or uh, few uh, sports person those who succeeded in the young age but when you take the entire data that means uh, uh, longitudinal research work on the uh, long term athlete development it clearly indicates very few sports requires early specialization a games for example in case gymnastics or uh, um, what i can say uh, res, uh, some uh, uh, sport like uh, skating it requires early specialization other than that if you take any sport major sports especially team games or individual athletic events take like 100 meters or javelin throw or hurdles or a football basketball anything you take example if you specialize even in the later part of your life you will be very successful in the particular sport that is what the research finding clearly says but because of uh, federations or associations or some other reason maybe because of parental uh, pressure forcefully young athletes are uh, we can see in our uh, places like chennai or in pondicherry in the age of 5 6 people are carrying a big kit bag and they are going for a, 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 a specialized training on a particular sport it may be i'm not focusing only on one sport it may be cricket or it may be football or tennis or badminton whatever it is the the, the problem is actually just think about it if you, you people may think Uh, sir there are they are making huge money in cricket they are making huge good uh, business in badminton what is wrong of course but what is the percentage of success rate 
out of crores and crores of people or lakhs and lakhs of people, those who are taking part in particular sport, only hundreds or thousands are coming up. They are able to succeed in a particular sport. What about remaining people? Whether they are in the sporting profession, whether they are in physical activity lifelong, there is a question mark. Why? Because too much of emphasis on sport specific training. What is sport specific training means actually? Specifically focusing or repeatedly performing one type of training program related to one particular sport. What may, whatever it may be. It may be badminton or tennis or cricket or football, any sport you take example. But repeatedly performing the same through which achieving the higher level performance. So what happens actually? You are, you are uh, training your body. That means you are, uh, you are giving only few repeated movements to your biological system through which you are avoiding or omitting all other activities or movement, fundamental skills and movement skills or motor activities. So if they fail to succeed, by chance if they succeeded, like Sachin Tendulkar or whoever it is, that's good. But by chance, if they are not able to succeed in a particular sport, what will happen? They cannot switch over to other sport. Please understand, they cannot switch over to other sport. Whether it is advisable to teach only chemistry subject from LKG to 12th standard, even up to college, whether we are doing to our students, of course it is not, right? We are starting with alphabets. First we are teaching alphabets A, B, C, D, and then numbers we are teaching one, two, three. And then we are starting a small diagrams, small pictures, interesting stories. Likewise, we are starting. After that, they are started words. And then they are going to uh, framing a sentence. And then they are going for a paragraphs. And then they are going to subject wise. For example, even in schools, they are, they are studying the basics of chemistry, basics of physics, basics of history, basics of English, basics of Tamil. There are so many subjects they are experiencing. And finally, when they come to college level, that means when they are attaining the adulthood, or at least uh, during 11th and 12th, they are focusing, okay, I'm going to take biology group. I'm going to take computer science group. I'm, do I'm going to take commerce group. Likewise, they are specializing. At what age they are specializing? In the age of 14, 15, 16 only, they are coming to a conclusion. But in sports, it is totally against. Just think about it actually from the young age. For example, I'm not able to be a good tennis player. So I'm forcing my kid to uh, play tennis, whether he likes it or not, that is immaterial. I, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm giving a 10,000 rupees racket to you. I, I, I'm giving a best coaching aspects or facilities to you. But whether he likes the sport or not, we, we don't know. And is it advisable to start sports specific training in that age? We never worried. You take example of a South African cricket player like uh, John T. Rhodes or uh, Herbie de Villiers. They played hockey in their, in their Olympic team. After that, it's show to cricket. Uh, if you take about uh, Herbie de Villiers, he was a, a national champion in school level in his uh, athletic events like sprinting. And he was a very good, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, he, uh, sorry, he was a very good athlete during his college days also. Then he switched over to cricket and he picked up cricket because of athleticism. That means, what is athleticism actually? The term athleticism means a, a person can learn the basics of all motor skills and basic skills of the sports and games. For example, running, jumping, throwing, catching, crawling. See, all these things should be taught in a proper way and most importantly for fun and pleasure. The young age, if you put your kid in the training academy, it is not to specialize a particular sport. I wanted to enjoy tennis. Okay, of course, it is good. Go and enjoy tennis for some period. I wanted to swim. If my kid is asking, I want to swim, I'll put him in the swimming pool for some time. Then he is asking me, I want to enjoy football. Of course, enjoy football. So he is learning all the basic motor qualities by doing all this physical activity. Even uh, uh, traditional sports, other than our uh, formal sports, traditional sports we used to play during our childhood. I used to enjoy uh, playing gilly or uh, 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 what is a single leg hopping, like nundi, nundi, playing nundi, nundi or silly or uh, the, the, in Tamil it is named as uh, gundu. All these activities will try to develop your motor qualities, hand-eye coordination, but now, lack of all this activity, directly we are putting our kids into a specialized sport. For example, badminton, cricket, tennis. Of course, 
I am a lover of sport. I'm not against sport, competitive sport. But the problem is we are spoiling our young, talented athletes because of repeated movement of one particular sport or particular training program, overuse injury in the young age itself. If you see the statistics, lot of dropout from the particular sport activity in the young age itself. Only two to three percent are coming out. The cream of people are coming up and they are able to excel. But what about remaining 97 percent? Okay, of course, even though they are not able to excel in particular uh, uh, international level, whether they are in the field of physical education, sports, whether they are continuing physical activity lifelong, that is a question mark. So if there is no physical activity in the society, what is the problem we are facing? Of course, the, during the pandemic, uh, this pandemic got a very big lesson to all of us, importance of physical activity. If you develop a LTAD model, long-term athletic development, that means According to the age, you have to introduce physical activity. According to the stage, you have to introduce fitness program. Please think about it, whether we are doing it properly. Just like that, we started single uh, sports specialization. So the, the specialization model clearly says, allow your kids to, uh, in, in the base, that means from one to 10 years, zero to 10 years, they have to enjoy as much as possible sports and games, whatever they like for fun and pleasure, not to excel in a particular sport. Similar like uh, uh, alphabets, words, and learning uh, that uh, draw, uh, the taking part in drama, taking part in uh, drawing competition, singing competition, spelling competition. Likewise, they are experiencing everything. And finally, they are excelling in one area. The same way, we have to allow our sports, uh, that means the kids to enjoy all sports and games. So this model aims, this LTAD model aims to address any shortcomings and resulting consequences that hinder the current system. The current system is what actually? I, I'm not uh, against any federations or sports, please understand. But still I'm saying, I'm seeing a lot of advertisements by federations, under 10 cricket competition, under 10 tennis competition. Just imagine, is it advisable to play a comp in a competitive way? See, fun and pleasure, it is okay. I, I, I'm not against anything. I want, I want to play tennis. Of course, it's for my... But nowadays, if you see tennis, uh, coaching tennis, kids are going to tennis, uh, 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 that means uh, academies, they never allow them to play. Every time they will collect the ball and give the ball to the coaches. Only one person will hit 1,000 times or 2,000 times. Remaining people will see what they are doing, actually. It's not, actually. They, they, they are going to tennis to hit the ball. They wanted to hit the ball. Allow them to hit, whether it is a correct hit or not, that's immaterial. They are learning how to hit the ball. And then they are under, uh, they are learning the bounce, where to pick the ball, all those things. But the problem is winning somehow mindset, we are pressurizing them, we are treating them as a young adults. Actually, they are kids, but we are treating them as young adults. Overuse injury, very young age itself, show, uh, a ligament tear, or shoulder dislocation, or a, a acute injury they are getting and dropout. The, the dropout percentage is very, very huge in number these days. But we, people never worried about those things, actually. We are enjoying a cream of people in the IPL cricket tournament, cream of people in uh, standard international tournaments. But how many of them drop out from the sport? It is an injustice to our profession. Please understand this point. As a coaches, as a trainer, we are doing a lot of injustice to our profession. Yes, because a lot of people, those who are interested in sports and games, not for winning medal, for their health. So if they are not, if you are not motivating them to continue their sport up to their lifetime, what will happen? Obesity, diabetes, cardio, coronary heart disease, CSG. The country like India, we are not a developed nation. We are in a developing state only, but still uh, the, the biggest problem we, our population is facing is CHD, coronary heart disease, rich disease. India is going to be the capital of diabetic population. They're saying actually the, in the year 2030 or 2035, India is going to beat China in diabetic population. Is it a sweet news for all of us? The problem is we are following winning some of mindset in sports and games only only 1% or 2% of the people are coming out from the federations and associations. But remaining people are drop out from the sports because of improper training, improper uh, coaching aspects, 
improper stress on them during young age itself. So as well as providing a positive experience. See, the point is LTID provides a positive experience for all participants. See, everybody wanted to play tennis, not for winning a Wimbledon championship or winning Grand Slam. They wanted to enjoy their tennis. They wanted to, they wanted to continue their tennis after lifetime. But the problem is here, emphasize is on winning always, young age itself. If they are not able to win, psychologically, are, the stress comes because parents say, see this guy, he's the same age only, but he is performing well. You are not able to do. Similar like education in sports also, we are uh, uh, depressing them. What happens actually? Psychologically, he got depressed because actually we have to understand growth and development. We studied so much about growth and development during our bachelor degree and master degree. But whether we are applying in our profession, that is a question mark. We have to understand no two, equal, two individuals are same. When two individuals are not same means, think about the entire team. They are not at all same. But we are giving one kind of training for everybody. The entire school also doing the same kind of training. So it is an injustice. Uh, I saw one diagram about our education system. One elephant, one horse, one uh, cow, and one monkey stand in front of a tree. If a, whoever climbs the tree, you are good in education. So naturally, elephant or cow cannot do. Elephant, a monkey can do. So that is what in present scenario of sports also. We are giving one method of training. That means repeated method of uh, training a skill and technique of a one sport, excelling in that. So, but of course, there are people who are excelling. There is no doubt. They are displaying a, a, a fantastic performance. But what is the percentage of result? If you do a long-term research work, it clearly says only one or two percent are excelling in a particular sport. The remaining people are drop out from the sports. Whether the intention of a physical education professionals like we is dropping out or growing our profession to a higher level. That is a, it's a thinkable thing, right? So developing a comprehensive long-term athletic development program is very, very critical one. The program must start at youth level, first of all. This LTAD model is supposed to start with the youth level. Today, especially uh, in the present scenario, little has been done to provide youth coaches with knowledge of how to teach and develop proper movement techniques. Uh, in this point, in this juncture, I want to give an example. I attended one uh, um, program uh, as our Dean Sir quoted, badminton uh, coach Gopi Chand gave one lecture about uh, physical literacy in a webinar or sorry, I attended a webinar in that he said, a national champion, youth national champion in badminton, one girl. During the uh, training session, Gopi Chand threw the shuttlecock towards her. She is not able to catch the shuttlecock properly. Please understand the point here, what I'm saying actually, what I'm mentioning. Very important point. It, is, it was not coined by me. It was told by Gopi Chan, yeah, uh, international renowned badminton player. He only said this. What it means actually, a yeah, champion, national level champion in badminton, but she is not able to catch the cock properly. It was thrown by Gopi Chan. Suddenly, he was uh, worried. She, she was a national champion, but she is not able to catch the cock, shuttle cock properly when he throws. What it means actually? Repeated method of training, hitting the cock, serving, drop, going back, smashing. Repeatedly, they are training this and they are achieving medal in national level. But catching, running, throwing, these are all basic motor qualities. She's not able to catch the cock. So this is the drawback of our system. Please understand the point. We are saying, okay, she's a national champion in a particular sport. There is no doubt. But she's not able to catch. So catching, running, jumping, throwing, all natural motor development, motor qualities. So this is what our present scenario of sporting situation in our country. This is one example I'm giving. You take example of anybody, but you, you compare European cricket players or South African cricket players. They are good in football. They are good in hockey. They are good in athletics. They are good in cricket also. What it means actually, they have a very sound base. That is what named as LTAD model, long-term athletic development. They have to experience all motor qualities, all skills of sports. So if he's not able to good, if he's not able to succeed in hockey, he may switch over to cricket. If he's not good in cricket, he may switch over to athletics. If he's not good in athletics, he may switch over to swimming. 
if he is not good in swimming he may switch over to shooting so there are a lot of opportunity like our profession but the problem is here coaches are often with an excessive number of competitions incomplete athlete development we are forcing focusing too many competitions in a year especially for young see pro professional players taking part in too many competitions means it's okay there is no issue at all but young people itself especially i'm saying a lot of parents are going with our young kids uh, and they are saying I'm very proud my son or daughter is taking part in this competition in this competition in this competition so uh, we are he is not or she is not able to go to school properly she is taking so many competitions in a year just imagine so many competitions in a year incomplete athlete development why emphasize on sport specific skills only sport specific skill that means badminton means badminton related skill only you are emphasizing the whole year from the age of 5 or 6 or in case of volleyball you are emphasizing only on volleyball related skills but just think about our days we enjoyed badminton we enjoyed kho kho we enjoyed cricket we enjoyed kabaddi we enjoyed athletics also and even in athletics uh, my my pt teacher used to say you are very tall go for hurdles you are very tall you go for high jump also so i experienced hurdles i experienced javelin i experienced i so winning is secondary but jumping and landing i gained the experience throwing i gained the experience playing softball and cricket i gained the experience of hitting the ball catching the ball so all motor qualities was developed so now i can continue my sport see for example i can be a good badminton player i can i can enjoy my badminton i can enjoy my tennis i can enjoy my uh, ball badminton i still i can enjoy my fitness activities why because i learned all motor qualities during my young age as a fun and pleasurable thing not as a punishment but most of us we are many athletes suffer systematic systemic overuse injuries please understand systemic overuse injuries caused by improper training or repeated submaximal repetition of stress followed by inadequate recovery no recovery at all why because winning somehow today this competition velour next competition is in chennai next week next competition in ahmedabad next competition is delhi see of course for professional athletes it is good because they are making money and they are even if they got injury they can treat but those who are in the growing stage please understand growing stage means what actually growth when you talk about growth early maturer late maturers are there of course we have to understand uh, what is early, maturation maturation means the same classroom for example in sixth standard same age chronologically same age but whether they have the same iq whether they have the same uh, understanding ability whether they have the same uh, adjustability then the answer is no right because some of them are early maturers some of them are late maturers i take example uh, um, nba basketball player jordan when i see the history of jordan it was written like this actually his school physical education teacher or a basketball coach i'm not sure he said you are not fit for basketball so don't come to basketball so he left basketball uh, in, in school in school ages i'm saying actually but luckily somebody motivated him again he continues basketball after some time he picked up and he became a, a nba champion a very renowned one of the renowned basketball player the problem is why, why he was rejected by a pe teacher in a school or a basketball coach in a school because winning somehow mindset they are saying two people he is better than you so you don't come because their importance is winning not promoting basketball please understand that promoting basketball in sense what some of them are uh, elite people they can continue elite level of games and sports remaining supposed to enjoy basketball why you are denying opportunity of playing basketball so the point is our job is motivating everyone take part in physical activities and sports through which we can develop a competitive sports also and also side by side we can develop healthy physical activity that means physical activity through sports up to lifetime but there is a question mark whether whether there are people are continuing lifetime sports even professional people are dropping out their sports and they gain lot of body weight and they gain lot of problem physical that means uh, uh, 
uh, hypokinetic diseases. What is hypokinetic means actually? Hypo means less, kinetic means movements. When your movements are restricted, that means I'm playing and I'm enjoying my sports up to my college level, up to my university level. After that, I never used to play. Why? Because only elite athletes got opportunity to play university team or you know, a college team. Remaining people never encouraged to take part in sports. So they don't have the culture of taking part in sports. Please understand this. So this is what LTAD play a very important role. Long-term athlete development. It means according to the growth and development, according to the stage you have to. Simple example I can give you. If you want to develop the strength of an adult, so that means boy or girl, when you can introduce strength training means not at the age of three years or four years. When you have to introduce strength training, only after attaining PHV, that means peak height velocity. Even the peak height velocity was attained by boy or girl means, boy, uh, it is different, girl, it is different. Girl attained PHV a little bit earlier than boys. Please understand this actually. So growth and development. So it's a very important aspect for coaching. But how many coaches are worrying about those things? Whether they have the better understanding about what is peak height velocity. When a, a boy or a adolescent boy or girl attaining PHV, they are not worrying about it, and they have they don't have any understanding about it actually. They know the set of training drills and programs. They will implement that. Who overcomes? So this is what the problem. So this LTAD model framework will helps for practical, functional, and sequential skill development to assist coaches with the best practices model to develop a movement vocabulary, physical literacy and movement skills that improve athleticism. The word athleticism means what? A quality of, uh, uh, that means athleticism means a person is having a good athletic ability. If he has a good athletic ability, what is athletic ability? Running, jumping, throwing, catching, crawling, everything, agility, good agility, good balance, good technique, good skill, then he can choose any sport whenever he wants. He can switch over to other sports if he fails to or if he don't get opportunity. But is in the present scenario, just, just think about the present scenario of federations. If, when you are training a person in, only on cricket, only on badminton, after some time, due to some other reason, he's not able to excel in a particular sport. Is it possible to switch over to other sport? It is not possible. Why? You are training your body, biological system into only one repetitive stress, or only one particular movement. So uh, biological, uh, what is this actually? Adaptation will take place. You are, you are uh, neural and muscular system adapted to only one particular movement or only repeated uh, skills in a particular sport. You cannot switch over. Transfer of learning is very difficult. Please understand this point. Transfer of learning, we trained about, we studied transfer of learning positive transfer of learning, negative transfer of learning, or zero transfer of learning, likewise. Negative transfer of learning also there. But when you train syst systematically only one, one particular sport in the young age itself, transfer of learning is very difficult. Same nature of sport is available, you may. Otherwise, it is very difficult. For example, you train frequently only on uh, uh, badminton. Suddenly you want to play, uh, if you want to do swimming, it is very difficult. Please understand this point. That's what. But when you go experience of swimming, badminton, tennis, cricket, kabaddi, koko, uh, and athletic activities in the young age itself, he may choose any sport and he can switch out to any sport even in later part of life, not necessarily winning or continuing for a sport for fitness aspect. Sports for all. The concept is developing now. Sport for all. That means sports is uh, for everybody. That means not necessarily for young people or adolescent or adult. It may be for aged people also. When, when we go for a research statistics, uh, even like 100 meters, you just exam take example, even like 100 meters, best performance was achieved in the age of 26, 27, 28, later part of life. You take example of Usain Bolt, whoever it is, they are not 13 or 14. Then why you are forcing your young athletes to take part in one particular sport in schools and colleges through which we are spoiling our younger generation people. That's what this LTAD model speaks actually. So why we need long-term athlete development model? Adult training and competition structures are superimposed on young athletes. So this is what I told already. Superimposed on, we have adult training model. 
and competition structure we are superimposing on young athletes we never did any research work on what young people are needed so that's a drawback so preparation is geared to short term outcome of winning not the process our our preparation goal is actually short term short term very very short term i wanted to win somehow outcome of winning is short short term based actually not the process the process means what according to the growth and development of various stages okay now he is five year old in this age what he likes i think uh, uh, for fun uh, when i heard a uh, speech of tenkachi swaminathan a very renowned uh, tamil uh, um, a popular speaker he used to speak in uh, radios dinam uh, urthagaval is the popular program named as actually he used to say there is a playing equipment for kids right it is named as kiligulu pai if we use that kiligulu pai it gives sound yeah kind of a gazelle sound it will come right if you show that in front of a five year old or three year old boy or girl that means kids they will like that sound and they will smile at you and they will be happy to hear that but if you show the same for a 60 year old or 70 year old man what they will do they will get angry and they will beat you if you do that in front of them so this is what happening in sport we have a adult uh, training program structure and we are super imposing to our young athletes so that's what the uh, uh, ltad model wanted to uh, uh, recover from that situation so chronological rather than developmental age is used in training and competition planning we always use chronological than developmental that's what i told two terminologies early maturers and late maturers some of them are early maturers that means their age is equal 8 8 years old both of them are 8 years old but uh, he understand the concept he learn the concept he picks up he pick up the skill like a 12 year old boy 8 year old boy but he do the same as a 12 year old boy but the same 8 year old boy do a 5 year old boy 3 years his growth is lesser even though chronological age is 8 his ability his understanding ability or uh, uh, what is his motor qualities are like a 5 year old boy so he is a late maturer please understand the point but a late maturer can pick up the sport sometimes better than the early maturer if you give opportunity if you have a patience but the problem is we don't have a patience as a coach as a trainer we want to win medal so we never give importance for this kind of ltad models so fundamental movement skills and sport skills are taught not taught properly during young age as i said they never taught fundamental movement skills or sport skills properly why because somebody is good in technique uh, see for example you are you are putting 20 kids in an academy they have to give equal weightage for all but what is happening in academies they are seeing 20 people there are around five people is good they said okay remaining 15 people there is no need because they are they, the five, we want only five they are good but if you wait for another three months or another one year out of 15 they may be better than all this five but we don't have a patience that's a problem so the fundamental movement skills and sport skills are not taught properly so we need ltad model many sports specializes too early in an attempt to attract and retain participants so this is the biggest problem to retain the participants to attract the participants we are specializing too early we are forcefully specializing too early because uh, if my parents my, my uh, kids parents forcefully putting in a tennis academy forcefully putting in a cricket academy forcefully putting in a tennis football academy why because they think uh, my son uh, like uh, 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 he they, they are imagining that my son is supposed to be like a virat kohli or federer or nadal when in the age of 4 5 itself it's not see it needs lot of things actually if somebody wants to become a nadal or a federer it should be in a progressive systematic and progressive way then they can attain of course if they have the talent they can attain there is no doubt otherwise allow them to enjoy tennis why you are worrying about only performance or winning medals so optimal development requires when if you want optimal development of athletes or your kids what is optimal what is required in a particular stage what is required in the particular growth and development according to growth and development that is what optimal development balanced training competition 
and recovery program. That means you have to give a balanced training and also give exposure of competition and also proper recovery. But now, he, even uh, a player like uh, uh, Shevad complained sometime. We are not able to get recovery properly. We are forced, we are continuously, we are taking part in international tournaments, various tournaments. So uh, they are not able to recover properly. So they are not able to deliver properly also. Sometimes overuse injury. We take example of Javagal Srinath. We can give so many examples from sporting scenario or even in uh, uh, hockey, football also we can give. Why? Because overemphasis and competition, winning somehow mindset leads to poor recovery. It leads to injury. When it leads to an acute injury, a permanent injury, then they cannot survive or they cannot continue their sport after that also. So a balanced programming approach that should relate to biological development and maturation is very essential. So equal opportunity for recreation and competition. So most important thing, you have to give equal opportunity for recreation and also for competition, not only on competition. Here, we never worried about recreation values, but during our bachelor degree, BPS or BPR, recreation and sports, we study how we, got, we can design recreative activities for our students in schools and colleges. Through sport, how they can see um, why sport is a very big recreative activity, I'll tell you, not only competitive. Young people, for example, those who are in the adolescence and adulthood, they may not be very good in skill and technique, but they like to play basketball, they like to play volleyball, they like to play cricket because they have a lot of energy in their body. They want to channelize their energy in the right path. If you want to channelize their energy in the right path, allow them to enjoy their sport, not for winning. If they, if, see for example, a, a student studying in engineering college or in a dental college, whatever college, arts and science college, if you are not giving opportunity for them to spend, spend their energy in the right path by playing football, kabaddi, not for the teams, I'm talking about everybody in the college, what will happen? Their energy will be channelized in some other way. They will go, they will roam around with their, their, with their peer, peer group and they will go to, uh, uh, what I can say that, uh, cinema, theater or some other area, they will, they will channelize their energy in the improper ways. Why? Because you are not giving opportunity for them to channelize their energy in the right path. So that is what the concept LTD again and again stresses. Long-term athlete development is not only for winning, it is for recreative purpose also. That means in this age, this boy and this girl is required these activities. Give them opportunity. Allow them to enjoy the particular activity. That is what the concept comes, right? So programs to be athlete-centered, coach-driven, and administration, sports science, and sponsor supported. That means what? First is athlete-centered. What is the need of athlete? What is the need of a person? What is the need of a kid? Based on their interest, you have to design your program, not based on the coach's choice or administration choice. But now it is based on the administration choice and coach's choice. Whatever the uh, federation or coach wants, they will design accordingly the program and they are forcing their athlete to take part. So there is a problem in that uh, program model. So uh, they, the, the, the long-term athlete model, long-term athlete development model, uh, this is a model given by Ballet, a sports scientist from Norway, uh, based at Canada. It was an interesting thing he gave. Stages and age. He gives, uh, there are nine stages, active start in which age zero to six fundamental stage that means uh, it, fundamental one what is the age for male it is six to nine for female it is six to eight why it is earlier for uh, six to nine for male because the growth and development of a boy is a little bit slower than girl so that's why the fundamental stage is for six to eight for female six to nine for male learning to train the second fundamental stage for male, it is 9 to 12. For female, it is 8 to 11. And then training to time. Training to time means what? Building the engine. This age only, you have to introduce speed, uh, endurance and speed activities. Please understand the point. Before that, it should not be. So here, the age for male is 12 to 16. For female, is 11 to 15. And then learning to compete. How uh, Experiencing the challenge of competition. When? 
it should be in the age of 16 to 18 for male. In case of female, it is 15 to 17. And then the uh, sixth stage is training to compete. Now only uh, uh, enjoying the heat of the battle. What is competition means? So that they have to experience training to compete. For the comp for, for competitive purpose, they have to train. So what is age? Eight to 21, sorry, 18 to 21 for boys. In case of female, it is 17 to 21. Now almost same age group. So in the beginning stages, especially for first three stages, female uh, uh, growth is bigger. But when I attain to adulthood, same again. So then learning to win. Once you got the heat of the battle experience, that means competitive experience, now learning to win. Now you have to approach learning to win. That means how to give a consistent performance. So for male, it is 20 to 23. Female, it is 20 to 23. Now it is equal, right? So when you are working as a coaches for elite team, like uh, uh, after adulthood, if you are working as a coach, that means uh, uh, the, the team that you are handling is adulthood means you can treat them equally. There is no problem. But uh, from active start to learning, training to compete, there are a lot of difference between boys and girls, according, even between boys and between girls also. That we have to understand. That is the reason why uh, during our bachelor's and master's degree, we are studying uh, a topic named as foundations of physical education in which we are studying growth and development of boys and girls, right? Uh, uh, infancy, childhood, adolescence, sorry, pre-adolescence, and then uh, uh, adolescence, adulthood. So all those things, why we are studying those things? We have to understand different uh, stages. There are different, uh, 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 what is this? Developmental activities taking place in your body. So accordingly, we have to design our activity. Then only they will enjoy the particular activity in the particular stage. If you superimpose uh, adult training program or uh, competitive structure in the young athlete, naturally, a lot of dropouts will take place and they are prone to acute injuries. Uh, permanent, see, because of acute uh, permanent injury, dropping out sport is one problem. The second important problem they cannot lead their life comfortably. Once they got an injury, for example, if they got injury in their ankle, knee, or hip, or shoulder, lifelong they have to lead the, uh, uh, they have to live with the problem. So day-to-day uh, -day activities, it is very, very difficult for them. So uh, with a proper, improper knowledge and improper training, we are spoiling someone's life. Please understand the point. You are not helping them to achieve medal. That is a different issue. But you are spoiling somebody's life because of improper training you are imposing on them in the young age itself. And then after learning to win, the eight stages, winning for a living. That means performing when it counts. So male 23 plus, female 23 plus. Winning for a living. That means always trying to win, consistently trying to win for your... That is what uh, professional competitive players. And then... The last stage is actually, this is what the most important stage according to my view, active for life. That means dealing with adversity. So after you are dropping out from the competitive sports, even at any age, whether it is possible to continue your sporting activity. So that is a question mark. In that case, the model was very good. If you go to Europe, I, 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 some of my friends told actually, that's what I'm sharing with you all. And I, I experienced in uh, France personally also. They are conducting tennis tournaments for 60 plus, 70 plus, 80 plus, likewise. Here also, in Indian condition also, they are conducting 45 plus, 55 plus, 65 plus. But after that, very rarely they used to conduct. Even 45, 55, 65, only 10 people or 15 people will come. But the problem is continuing. That means active for life is a question mark. Why? Because you are active start, fundamental stage, learning to train, training to train, or learning to compete, or training to compete stages. First five or six stages are not properly done by your existing system. That is why you are not able to actively involve up to your lifetime. So if you change this model, LTAD model, into your training programs in your schools and colleges, of course, those who are talented can continue professionally. There is no drawback for them, actually. But 
those who are not having the talent to continue at higher level but they can enjoy the sport for fitness and fun until their lifetime and if that comes automatically we can overcome this uh, uh, lifestyle oriented problem like diabetes obesity see country like india we we gave yoga to the entire nation entire world but we are not practicing it actually our ancestors we we never uh, three four generation before if you talk about uh, diabetes nobody knows about diabetes but last 50 60 years india is a, india is going to be the capital of diabetic population why because nobody is nobody is taking part in physical activity or active life for through sports why the the model is wrong the model followed by sporting federations and government of india is not up to the mark if they change that model 100% we can promote our sporting activity from childhood to adulthood sorry adolescent uh, uh, sorry from cradle to grave that means from your birth to death we can continue your sport and we can enjoy your sport that is what most important through which we can equip our uh, physical activity level we can overcome all these uh, uh, unhealthy problems so there is a question mark in that so this is what a pictorial representation of that actually Active start fundamentals, learning to train, training to train, training to compete, training to win, and active for life. Active for life means what actually? You 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 are for example you may be a football basketball player. You are retired from your uh, professional playing, but still you can continue in clubs and you can continue in local uh, area. You can or you can take part in the um, senior tournaments through which you can enjoy your basketball up to your lifetime through which you are. Equip, you are enriching your physical activity that is what the concept says actually so see the stages of human growth it's a long term right uh, as i said actually infancy childhood adolescence adulthood and then it leads right see the metamorphosis butterfly life cycle stages egg to caterpillar to chrysalis adult emerges and then finally into an adult butterfly seed to plant you see this picture how it grows how many day, how much years it takes to become a plant success is simple very very simple actually speaking do what is right the right way at the right time so this is the most important word you have to understand success is simple do what is right the right way at the right time if you fail to do the right way at the right time or if you are doing the right way at the wrong time there is no benefit or you are doing the wrong way at the right time there is no benefit so what is right in the right way you have to do at the right time so according to the growth and development so if you want to introduce strength training after phv that means once the athlete attaining the phv then only you can slowly introduce strength training very simple question i can ask you uh, i am not able to do one or two push ups properly simple understanding just for your understanding i'm saying this i am not able to do one or two push ups properly what it means actually i have uh, my muscles and my joints are having a poor maximum strength but you are asking me to do plyometric push ups that means push ups with a clap a person who is not able to do one push ups properly if you allow them to do push ups and claps what will happen either they will hit their face or shoulder dislocation or a permanent injury ligament tear something like so that is what you have to understand uh, or, or what is right uh, do the right way at the right time that is what ldad comes long term athlete development long term that means it should be uh, uh, 10 to 15 years the scientific studies clearly says Uh, 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 if you want to achieve in a particular profession, especially in sporting situation, there are there are there are very less scientific evidences, but it is a strong message. You have to spend ten thousand hours in a particular training program, ten thousand hours to excel in a particular anything. Sir, I want to be a software engineer. Spend ten soft, uh, successful software engineer like Bill Gates. Ten thousand hours he has to spend. I want to be a very successful basketball coach. Ten thousand hours you spend in that profession. I want to be very successful as an athlete. Ten thousand hours you have to spend, then you will reach that goal. But
but it should be in the right way at the right time. That is also there is a question mark. So uh, uh, research da uh, done by uh, one of my friend, uh, Professor Rajesh Kumar from Hyderabad University, Osmania University, Hyderabad. Research on LTAD model. Ten international athletes from India who uh, participated in Olympics, Asian Games, Commonwealth Games, and other international events were uh, given a customized questionnaire to assess their training age, achievement, experience, and other aspects of a long-term development. Uh, so, Duty Chen, you know, right? A very popular athlete nowadays. Uh, she uh, achieved a, a World University medal. Uh, um, so, uh, some, uh, she got medal in the Summer Olympic Games. But, you know, the how many years she underwent training for to achieve all these things, actually. Almost she underwent long-term training years of 17 years. So winning somehow mindset is not correct. That's what the point here I wanted to emphasize. So again, you take example of Gagan Narang, a bronze medal in the men's 10 meters rifle, right? She got the prestigious Rajiv Gandhi Kel Ratna Award in the year 2010. But uh, you know, she started training during the graduation, but attained master, that means medal after 15 years of training. But, but note it actually, when he started the training, during the graduation only. So it is very clear, a lot of sports you can pick up in late uh, your age, later part of your age. That means after you are adolescence or adulthood also, you can specialize your sport, but you can pick up. But when, if you have a very good base during young age, that means good motor quality, motor activities, various sports and games. So that is what the concept comes. And uh, the, uh, the other assessment done by Pusarala Venkato Sindhu, an international badminton player, all her records are there. Olympic silver medalist, Rajiv Gandhi Kilratna Awardi, Padmasri Awardi, all those things. But again, uh, the uh, assessment clearly says 17 years of rigorous training, she achieved all these things actually. Still, she is continuing. And Pulale Gurpichan, a former badminton player and a coach also, chief national tennis coach. Rajiv Gandhi, Kelratna Awadi, Arjuna Awadi, Dronacharya Awadi, like, yeah, and mo most importantly, he won the All England Badminton Championship. Achieved international performance after 15 years of rigorous training. Right? So, years into months, months into weeks, weeks into today. So, you need a long base. You see the uh, um, cone structure. Those who are having a long years of experience can months come to months, months into weeks, month, weeks into today's performance. So filter long-term goals into actionable items for today. But if you have a strong base, then only it is possible to enjoy the juice. Please understand the point. It's like a funnel-like structure. This is a triangle you have to understand. So long years of base is very important in which also growth and according to the growth and development of a child, kid give various exposures. That is what the concept says actually. So what changes does we need to make? The current sports program of events is not progressive or account for long-term athletic development. So the event structure needs to be altered. So events are developmentally appropriate. So I said, that's what I gave with an example of a, a learning a cycling. If you, if you, if you want to learn cycling, what you are doing, for example, you wanted to give cycle to your kid, three-year-old three year old boy or girl. What you are doing? Three cycle, three, three tires, three wheels, because it is balanced, they will not get injury first. After that, from that to two wheeler, sorry, two, two wheels with the supporting wheels, two more supporting wheels. Again, for their safety, we are worrying. So in the age of six, seven. After that, when they reach 10 or 11, and they are having a good balance, what we are saying, giving the real bicycle experience. So according to the growth and development, we are giving experience for them, right? The same way, so when we are worrying about our kid, the same way we have to worry about others, kids also. So as a coach, we have to be very careful. What is the age? What, what is the developmental age? What is the chronological age? What is the, uh, what is the training experience already is having? Everything we have to consider. Based on that, even progressions must be added to meet athlete needs. You have to you, you add even progressions according to the 
uh, need of an athlete, what he needs in the particular stage. So most important thing is fun and pleasure, and then second is competition and winning somehow. So take uh, time to take the right decision, whether you are going to take a long term or a short term. So after this presentation, at least uh, uh, this is, I, I, I told you very clearly uh, from the beginning itself, uh, I'm not going to teach you. I'm going to share my ideas and views about long-term athletic development. Actually speaking, it is not my view. At, uh, one of the interesting books, see, Long-Term Athlete Development written by Iswan Balai, Richard Bay, and Colin Higgs. Wonderful book uh, uh, by Human Kinetics. By Human Kinetics. Uh, it was an eye-opener for me. So then I changed my ideas about uh, uh, what is the current system flaw in our system, what we can do for a, see the most important thing is, of course, we have to promote our competitive sports, but we have to worry about sports for our entire population, sports for all, and through which we can develop a healthy nation. So there is a question mark in that. So what we are going to choose, it's up to our hand. The final word again, Athlete development is a long-term approach. It is a long-term approach, right? So thank you for your uh, patience and for a wonderful uh, attention. If I had eight hours, I wanted to conclude with that Abraham Lincoln's quote. If I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I would spend six of them sharpening the ax. If my eggs are very sharp, I can do the work within two hours. So I spend six hours to sharp my eggs and two hours only for cutting the tree. But this system, our present system is, we are cutting the tree for total eight hours with the improper acts. So with this, I conclude my presentation. Uh, 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 I think it's uh, only 3.20, but still, uh, if any interaction is there, it is uh, welcomeable. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity, Dr. Jesus Rajkumar, sir, uh, Director of Sports, Dr. Uh, Mona Christian, sir, and all other landed faculty members, and those who are attending this program, it's my immense pleasure to thank you all. It's the session is open to queries now. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Dr. Ilya Raja. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. Uh, we have a question from uh, Dr. Akhil Mahrotra. He has a question like this: uh, Who has developed LTAD model in India? It is Sai or any other sports agencies? Um, I, I don't know who asked this question. You said his name, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Mr. Malhotra, yeah. The, the, the thing is, this long-term athlete development model was developed by Norway, uh, Norwegian scientists who settled in Canada. This model was followed by United States, Canada, UK, even some countries in Asia. But still now, our coaches are, whether they are following, uh, whether it was officially uh, re uh, recommended by Sai, I don't know, but I got an opportunity to go through this book. I told you, na, I showed the books also. So I wanted to share this information with you all. So if you want to equip knowledge on LTAD, uh, I can share the book to Jesus sir. He can share with you all. I, I have a soft copy also. You go through the concept. Why I was really admired by the concept means actually, our emphasis is only winning and promoting competitive sports to uh, international level in schools and colleges. But only if only few percentage of people are attaining that level, what about remaining population? See, for example, uh, Jesus sir was a wonderful, uh, very good tennis player. I know him. But whether he continues tennis for fun and pleasure till date, in that case, our model is good. He played during his college time and he was a coach for some time. But now he is not playing means our model is a failure. That is what the concept says actually. Because if you want to develop a healthy nation, because our former president of India, uh, Abdul Kalam said, India is going to be, India is going to be a superpower nation in 2020. But now we cross 2020, uh, 2022. <coughs> if you want to make a country a superpower nation, only because of healthy population it is possible. If your population is diabetic, obese, and BP, sugar, everything is there. How you can make your country as a developed nation? So first, give opportunity for everybody. And then, of course, you promote competitive sports also. That I can agree. 
So that is the reason why this LTID model gives a wonderful uh, structure. Develop the model is based on uh, de uh, different develop developmental age and their uh, need of the particular age. That's what I gave example of alphabets, numbers, words, all those things actually. So please understand that whether we are putting our kid in LKG and asking him to study trigonometry from the day one. So why you are asking them to continue a particular systematic training in the young age itself? That is a question mark, right? So that is what uh, this concept gave. It was given by Eswan Balay and Richard Way. These two scientists are from Canada. They developed this model. Lot of countries started practicing this model. Surely I will share this e-book e of this copy to uh, director and Jesus sir, you can get this copy from them. Yeah, sure. So many, many thanks, Dr. Eli Raja. A lot of participants are just uh, requesting for the soft copy of the book. You please send it to us. We'll share them. 100% sir. It is my pleasure. Uh, yeah, no more questions from the uh, participants. We can, so I think we can just go for the word of session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I would, I would like to thank Dr. Lewis for his welcome address. I'd like to thank Dr. Jawaharlal, Dean College of Agriculture Sciences for his effective, efficient, and motivating the facilities to gain knowledge through faculty development program. Thank you, sir. I'd like to thank the speaker of today's session, Dr. Gile Raja, the legend in the field of physical education and sports for his valuable speech. Thank you, Dr. Gile Raja. Thank you so much. I thank nice all the participants you, for your patience hearing. We shall all meet tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for the fifth day FDP program. Thanks a lot. God bless you all. Take I thank you all once again, sir. I thank the department and you know institution for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, it is an, it's a platform to share my view. Uh, thank you once again to everybody. Thank you all the participants for a patient's hearing. Thank you. Thank you, sir.